Good morning. My name is Dana Zook. I am a livestock specialist, area livestock specialist from Oklahoma Cooperative Extension. I work out of the Enid office and cover a majority of the Northwest Oklahoma. And I work cohesively with county educators to provide Oklahoma producers the best nutrition advice based on the producer situation. And so my, my goal and my really joy is assisting producers with livestock nutrition. So let's just get started and review some of these things that we offer as far as livestock nutrition to our constituents. Livestock nutrition valuation and assistance is a very important part of our service to Oklahoma producers because for instance, in beef operations, nutrition accounts for 40% of total operating costs in beef operations, for instance. And similar to other, this is very similar to other livestock entities in that a majority of the costs within those operations are nutrition, so it's very important. We offer services and guidance in a variety of livestock species. Uh, the assistance we offer is mostly focused on cattle, but the expanding small new ruminant side, sheep and goats, and backyard poultry has produced a lot of questions for producers, young and old. Um, we do provide some guidance as far as equine, but would reach out to our state specialists from that perspective, but we can help you in any way um, that we possibly can. So in livestock nutrition, um, basically the things that we offer is identifying the nutritional needs of livestock, interpreting forage analysis that you can submit to your county extension office, uh, providing supplementation advice, total diet formulation, and feed ingredient comparisons to find the most economical feed source based on producer's operation. This is a, a very small subset, kind of vague, but we will dive into each one of these um, as we move forward, but um, really gives a, a total idea of what we for provide for producers. So in my opinion, the very first, most important first step is understanding the stage of production of our livestock as it will cause uh, nutrient requirements to differ. Um, and that, that an example of that would be um, Lactating cows, as you see on this graph, have a much higher nutrient requirement as far as protein and energy. In fact, they require 16% more energy than a dry cow and 38% more protein. And so we must take that into account to meet her nutrition requirements. Another great example of the expertise of our county extension offices is understanding, for instance, goat energy requirements, knowing that Pregnant does have a high energy requirement just before kidding. That's a uh, kind of an anomaly. It's kind of a strange thing, but if we understand that, we can adjust nutrient requirements accordingly. Another area of expertise offered by the extension offices is forage use, um, understanding providing um, expertise into forage use. Now, what does that pertain? That's kind of a vague term. Um, some of the things we can provide is uh, recommendations of when to harvest and how to sample according to what forage you will be feeding. This includes both standing and harvested forages. Harvested forages are those that are in the bale. Um, we would educate producers to obtain a representative sample of both standing and uh, harvested forages so that we can get a the best idea of what quality that forage would be for your livestock. <clears throat> and then once that sample is obtained and sent off to be analyzed, the hard part is done. Um, when the results come back, producers can look into the look to the county office um, for interpretation of the results and answer questions like, how can I feed this? And does this forage meet my livestock nutrition requirements? This is very important as um, a lot of producers, especially late in the wintertime, do feed quite a bit of harvested forages. With supplementation, nutrients are being supplied to complement a forage resource, supplying protein and or energy to fill a deficiency of nutrients. That's, that's our goal. That's what I work with on a daily basis is to, is to either fill a deficiency or understand an excess to be um, very cost effective as far as hoping that we're not overfeeding animals, which can be very expensive, and we don't want to underfeed them either, as this is also very expensive um, in that it reduces pregnancy rates, 
lowers birth and weaning rates, provides us less pounds to sell, and we're really efficient, inefficient, excuse me, in the long run. In evaluating supplement alternatives, our goal is to always provide economical supplementation advice um, and change the mindset from habitual supplementation. And an example of this is just feeding the same thing year after year because that's what we've always done. We don't want to stay in that habit. We want to evaluate um, different supplements on a yearly basis based on our changing forage quality to get an idea of what um, the most economical supplement would be. We want to um, find the middle ground, um, understand what would work best for our producers. Understanding the forage resource does go hand in hand with supplemental need. This is a basic equation of how we determine supplemental need uh, for beef cows. It can work for any stage of production, um, any livestock um, that we would be addressing. So if we first, once we determine animal nutrient requirements, and then find the value of our forage and hay, we can do a little equation. So subtracting the value of forage and hay provides us with a nutrient excess or deficiency for those animals. And we can figure out the supplemental needs of those animals, whether or not we need to supplement them an extra nutrient source. So here, let's go through a little example. So if we're looking at March calving cows, 1,200 moderately sized cows, now honestly, they're small cows these days. If we look at, if we're in the current season, so late fall into that early winter, winter feeding season, we see that um, late gestation, she'll be in that late gestation production period, and that dormant native range that she will be grazing has a nutrient quality of 4% protein and 49% TDN. Her requirement based on her production stage, which is in late gestation during that December to February time period, is to be able to consume 1.9 pounds or almost 2 pounds of protein and just under 13 pounds of TDN or total digestible nutrients, which, which is our measure for energy. The forage value of our dormant native range provides 1 pound of protein and 11.7 pounds of energy. If we do the math, we have a deficiency of about one pound of protein and just over one pound of energy. Now, in my opinion, from a livestock standpoint, it's very, very important to look at this protein side, but also evaluate the energy side. They're, in my mind, very close, and so I would assume that they were equal, all right? The deficiency is equal for both energy and protein. So what are our supplement options? What do we have to feed these animals? They are endless. The supplement options can be a variety of things. Um, your conventional supplements, 20% and 38% cubes, the tubs, um, and liquid feed is another option, and alfalfa. Um, you can see the cost per unit is listed on that right-hand side. This is cost per pound. Um, what I would encourage producers to do when making a decision, and let's look beyond these pricing methods. Let's look at the cost per pound of nutrient that we need. Protein. Protein is equal to energy is what we said, that need for protein and energy very equal. So let's look at it as from a protein standpoint. How much protein do we need? So I pulled the two most conventional types. It's honestly the most, the most common questions that we get. Should I feed a 20 or 38% cube? It is known that 38% cubes are oftentimes more expensive per pound. I know that, and you can see that here, $300 per ton. But what, we need, what we're interested in is that protein, okay? So if we figure out how much protein is in that ton of feed, we take 38% of one ton of feed, or 2,000 pounds, which shows us we get 760 pounds of protein per ton. By taking that price per ton and dividing it by those that... Um, let me get my pointer here, and dividing it by that pounds of protein in that ton of feed, we see that the cost per pound of protein is 39 cents per pound. If we look at the 20% cubes and do the same math, we find that there's 400 pounds of protein in a ton of 
20% cubes. We do that same math, take the price per ton divided by that 400 pounds, and that gives us 62 cents per pound of protein. Which, based on the cost, which would you choose? I would say most producers, if, if the feed ingredient was available to them, would choose this 38% cubes to feed their cows. Okay, so this is just an example of something that we would go through. Very simple, but something that's really effective in helping producers reduce cost on a yearly basis. <clears throat> now that we've looked at cost per pound of protein, I've listed those for each of those feed sources, and you can see that here. The one thing I would consider, um, would talk to producers about, if they were considering a liquid feed option, is to pick it according to dry matter. Liquid feed is that. It's liquid because there's water in it. So we need to incorporate the dry matter conversion of that, and we would be happy to help as far as that goes. And as you can see here, the dry matter, by taking the dry matter into consideration, the cost of that pound per, per pound of protein is much higher. So something to keep in mind. And those are things that we like to um, look at when we have some of those questions. Stepping beyond supplementation, we help balance rations for, for livestock, lots of different livestock. I keep mentioning calves here or, or beef. We do do a majority of the nutrition work with beef. But I would say we would extend this on to a variety of livestock species. We like When we balance rations, it's typically for animals in the dry lot or grass trap environment where a total diet is being prepared for them. This would, examples of this would be preconditioning calves, butcher beef, semi-confinement cows, or many other situations. Um, they are endless. The tools that both county educators and the livestock specialists would utilize are often available to producers, uh, but we help them, we can help them utilize those tools, help them understand it from their perspective. So the OSU calculator is really good for supplement, supplementing cows, the supplementation of cows during the winter feeding season, and then the OSU ration calculator, which looks at more like balancing total mixed rations like we just talked about um, for cows or calves or a variety of things. The other things that we utilize and we can help producers with are the forage supplementation calculator, forage nitrate calculator, and a calculator used for mineral use helps calculate the mineral use over time. So there's a variety of things and many more that we can help producers utilize in their own home um, to address the needs of their livestock. Thank you so much for uh, listening in. I hope this gives you an idea of the options that are available to you for assistance with livestock nutrition questions.